One away, then on the outside is the favourite in Uptown Funk. On the rails next is the Blue Nipper. A length away, Sigil, who's following Uptown Funk to the corner. Then came Jakuku at the 450, down on the inside of Bevel. And the last pair at the top of the straight, Klondike Kenny and Reverend John, their homeward bound into the straight at the 350. The brakes have come off the leader, Roy Alec. Closing in, though, is my Greek boy who came off the fence around his heels and joined him. Two lengths to Uptown Funk and Sigil, followed then by the Blue Nipper with 100 left to go though My Greek Boy lets down, draws away Uptown Funk goes to second but it's another one for My Greek Boy and the Wolf Stable continues to churn them out Wolfie you told me I wasn't allowed to get tired of ever talking to you, I feel like I know you better than my best mate at the moment, this is unbelievable uh, Yeah it's very good, you know, it's like uh, people don't understand the hard work all us trainers and people behind the scenes put in, all your staff everything, owners that are loyal stick to the game uh, You know, and we're having a wonderful run I hope it doesn't stop now, but you know, we've got to pinch ourselves because we thought it was almost a good thing, but I did say to the boys, you know, the bubble's going to burst one day, but I hope it's not today. Uh, and just, you know, when, when things are going good, the jockey, you know, 12 months ago, all my owners were doubting him. I started to doubt him, but that wasn't his fault. It was the horses we had, and you know, now he's just riding that well and confident. You, know, you get a barrier, everything's going beautifully, and you know, the game's wonderful. It always has been wonderful to us. We've had a few bumps, but... It's been very fulfilling to me over a long period of time and the people that are around me, I can't put enough emphasis on them whether they're in Albany or in Perth. Uh, you know, the help I get and the support I get is insurmountable. And from you blokes in the media, you're an essential part of the industry and we just need to com keep uh, publicising this wonderful industry. We appreciate it, Wolf. It is going very well indeed. Race placement is such a key at the moment as well, especially with the system. You sent this horse to Cow and Gourley and got the win. What was the reason for going up there? Uh, mate, I'm a desperado and I've got to get a quid somewhere. So we took him there and that was good. Uh, also, he needed to win a race, you know, coming back in and the, uh, hence be the three weeks you know, between runs. That didn't worry us because he won first up. So we just keep him ticking along. You know, when you're going okay, you, you're never under any pressure. When you're under pressure, the wheels fall off and you know, when you get pressured from owners and people and the public and you wonder what you're doing wrong, but generally it's not that. It's the fact that if you've got time, everything's great. Where to for this guy now? I know you had a big opinion of him last campaign and things just didn't quite go to plan. Back-to-back -back wins now. That was very impressive and a good field as well. What's the, the map look like? Uh, two weeks and a fortnight. I did say he reminds me a lot of Mr Utopia. He's probably you know, 12 months away from that, a bit lighter horse uh, because he lengthens and quickens. Not many horses do that, but a couple of weeks is another one of those. If he ends up like Mr Utopia, we're going to be talking a lot more as well, mate. Congratulations. Thanks. I better go because Mac is getting sick of listening to me. Sean McGrady is over here as well. Sean, while the run continues for Steve Wolf, it also continues for you as well. But we mentioned those barriers on Wednesday. Lovely spot. Yeah, that's right. Uh, another good barrier. And this horse particularly needs that. Um, all last prep, he kept drawing wide and we went forward and he wouldn't be able to, um, to hang on. And then we rode him back and he sort of got a bit lost and... I uh, didn't really know what he was doing, but I suppose that was only his first prep. But this time in, he's um, only had the two starts and drawn a good barrier both times. And as soon as he gets covered up, um, he switches off, and that's what he needs to be able to finish off. And obviously, the leader today uh, gave us a good kick into the straight. And, um, yeah, we just had that perfect run from barrier one. But, you know, he, he's beat a handy field. It was a bit of a step up in, in class. And... Um, you know, we think uh, he goes all right. The feel of him, because through the early stages, his stride length was, you know, was, you were curled up, so it was just short and going on. But once you saw open space, the stride length increased dramatically and put pain to him quite quickly. Yeah, he does take a massive stride, and that's probably why he was jumping straight to the front last prep from wide gates. Um, it took a bit to get, it, get him back. But like I say, when you draw a good gate, you can just uh, put your hands down over his neck. And um, obviously that leader made it, his intentions clear to lead. So the pace was genuine, which really suited us as well. Certainly going very well for you all at the moment, mate. Enjoy it what happens. Congratulations. Thanks, Adam.